what's up everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple template for metal music in Reaper. If you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, please feel free to leave a like and comment on anything you see or hear. And if you also want to see more of this stuff like plugin reviews, gear demos and other heavy metal related videos, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. Alright, so quick disclaimer before we go on. This is only my own workflow, my own method, so hopefully what you're going to see will be good for you. But always remember that in music production there is not one single way to do things correctly. You may need to adjust the various settings to your own taste. Alright, so I want you to be able to fully understand what I'm doing here. And for this reason I'll be using a step-by-step -step approach explanation method. And this is what you're going to hear at the end of the whole process. Pretty heavy sounding, isn't it? You can download this whole project directly from the link in the description below after watching this video. So now let's delete everything and start totally from scratch. Bam! Oh my god, there's nothing. But don't panic, we can absolutely fix this in a couple minutes. So first of all, let's add the drums, the very inner sounds of our project. Right click, insert new track or just click Ctrl T for the quick shortcut and let's rename it Drums. Ok, now for this specific project I'm going to use the perfect drums VST plugin, so here it is. As you might notice, it already sounds very nicely balanced and almost mix ready, but of course we can make things a lot better. The very first thing to notice here is that the track we've created is stereo, which isn't really the best solution for us because the drum kit we're using has several different parts kicks, snare, toms, cymbals, and they should definitely be considered as separate groups. So this is what we're going to do now. Let's route the various instruments of the kit into four different tracks. Ok, let's hit Ctrl T four times and rename the freshly created tracks as kick, snare, toms and OH, meaning overheads, of course, for all the cymbals, crashes, splashes, i-hats, cowbells and so on. What we need to do next is to route the different parts of our drum kit into each one of the four tracks we've just created. So let's go on to the mixer section of our drum VST plugin, which may be called routing, route, mix, mixing or whatever according to different drum VST plugins of course, and practically route the kick to out 1 2, the snare to out 3 4, the toms to out 5 6 and hi hats, cymbals, overheads and room mics to out 7 and 8. In this way we'll be using perfect drums in multi-track mode and this will give us a lot of customization possibilities. This is definitely the trickiest part to understand so hold on, we're not done yet. Let's open our initial drum track in Reaper, which is still in standard stereo mode only, change it to a very high number of track channels, let's say for example 32, so we have a lot of room space to work with, and let's add new send signals. For example, for the kick drum, let's choose audio 1-2, like it was according to our VST plugin. 
And then for the snare, we see our drum VST plugin was routed to out 3 and 4, let's obviously select 3 and 4. You may see the yellow lights turn on every time I engage a receive signal into a track, and as well the blue lights turn on every time I send the signal to another track. This is very important to understand. Alright, so let's go on after the kick and the snare, let's set the toms and select 5 and 6. And the last one, overheads and room mics and everything else to 7 and 8. Alright, so have you survived so far? I really suggest you to save your project now. Let me now import a MIDI drum track that I pre-programmed and this is how it sounds. As you can see, now we can hear all the different instruments separately. Alright, so now if we listen to the solo tracks we've just created, we can hear only the kick or the snare or the toms or the overheads by themselves, and this is great if we want to tweak the settings a little bit. Let's continue by adding a simple EQ to the kick track and let's remove the typical clicky noise gate you get from unprocessed microphones recording. So, let's add a low pass filter at around 12k. Since I want a really heavy punchy sound from my kick sample, I'm adding a standard band peak at around 150Hz. Also, let's remove the very low rambling noise and let's add a high pass filter at around 20Hz. Let's also add another band peak at around 2k. Awesome! And yeah, since it's peaking a little bit, always remember to compensate the dBs you added in the EQ by removing them in the final gain stage of the equalizer. Ok, great! Alright, so now that our kick is kicking, let's go on with the snare. And let's add the re as well, and then add a high pass filter at around 100Hz. And yeah, again folks, these numbers may not be the exact tweak that you would need in your own mixes, so the best way is to let the solo the drum track play along and adjust the settings according to your own taste. Then I want to enhance the frequencies at around 1K plus 3dB 2.0. And also let's add a low pass filter at around 10K to remove all the nasty fizzy sound tails that general snares produce. I'm trying to get a tone as much clean as I can, because you know, I truly believe that sometimes the real essence of mixing is to remove unwanted frequencies rather than boosting everything to the stars. Also, you may like a little bit of reverb added to your snare's tone, so this is the best time to add it, being it through the original drum VST plugin, like in my case for example, or just adding another reverb plugin to your snare's effects chain. Again, remember to compensate the dBs you added in the EQ by removing them in the final gain stage. Here we go, this is getting heavier and heavier, and now it's time to tweak the toms, which is not toms hardware of course, and yeah, this is pretty much the same scenario I've used with the kick drum, high pass at around 50Hz, plus 3dB at around 300Hz, and to make them sound a little more punchy and clicky, let's have a high shelf at around 3500, plus 2dBs, this should sound very good together with the other instruments. Again, again, remember to compensate the dBs you added in the EQ by removing them in the final gate stage of the equalizer.
And now finally let's adjust the overheads and room mics. Let's head a high pass filter at around 250 Hz, you don't really need anything lower than that on cymbals. And let's head a high shelf at around 5K, about plus 3 dBs. Also let's add a very subtle low pass filter at around 15 kHz, just to stop all the high end frequencies to sum up and stop making your mix too fizzy and still remember to compensate the dBs you added in the EQ by removing them in the final gain stage. Awesome, I think we're done with the drums now, hit Ctrl S and save your project folks! Now it's time to add some more instruments to our template project, so let's hit Ctrl T and add a new track and rename it Bass and let's color it red to make it visibly different from the drums. So here I'm inserting a real DI bass track I personally recorded using my Jackson Kelly KBX Iridesk Swirl 4 strings bass, but you can also use any other bass simulator VST plugin, there are tons out there. Since we're trying to get a good metal tone, the simplest possible way to achieve it is to use an amp or preamp simulator adding then a cap sim or input slash prompt loader. Again, there are many 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 good ones out there, both freeware and paid software, I suggest you to take a look at my YouTube playlist, since my channel is really up to date and I'm constantly having fun testing and publishing reviews about AmpSins and IR files. So, for this particular video, I'll be using the free BOD version 3 plugin by TSC Audio, which has some limits of course, but sounds absolutely awesome straight out of the box, so let's tweak and adjust the tone settings while listening to the bass DI track playing in the background. Now, this is not totally necessary, but I've noticed that if you skip the next passage, you may lose some bass frequencies that could possibly make your mix thicker. So, I'm adding also an impulse response loader, NetIR2 by Ignite Amps and STL Tones, free software as well, and inside I'm loading an IR file made by Seekout Caps. Awesome, I guess we've got a pretty decent bass guitar tone for metal now. We've arrived to the most important parts in my honest opinion, the guitar tracks. So here you have mainly two choices, double tracking or quad tracking, meaning that you can either have an overall stereo guitar tone consisting of two separate recordings, each one pen 100% left or 100% right, or instead four separate recordings pen in different ways. I personally prefer just double tracking the rhythm guitars and then adding one or two more lead guitar layers to the mix, but I encourage you to spend some time testing and evaluating different approaches. Always remember though that the more tracks playing the same notes you add, the more tight and precise you need to play and of course the more editing you'll need to do. And that's why for me, being a totally lazy metalhead, double tracking is enough. <laughs> so let's hit Ctrl T twice and rename the tracks to Rhythm Guitar Left and Rhythm Guitar Right. And let's color them green like the color of money, money money that I'm making with my YouTube channel. You know, I'm a poor idiot like before. So I've added two tracks I recorded with this guitar, Jackson JS227 7 string, equipped with a pair of Duncan Solar pickups. Of course, if you want to see the specific video review I made for it, just look inside my guitar review YouTube playlist. 
And so, again, here we've got almost endless possibilities for Gitter, Amp Sims and FX. Trying to make it simple here, I'm using Neural DSP's 14 NTS Suite 2.0, loaded with two different impulse responses by Seek Out Caps, taken from the Modern Monsters IR pack. But you can really use whatever you want, even free plugins work the same way. Just sometimes they're a bit less neat sounding or lack some key features, it depends. However, now, very importantly, be sure to set the proper gain stage for each separate DI track, even for the bass that we've set before. You don't want the input signal for each track to be peaking or to be too low. So, after we've adjusted the gain, I suggest you to add a simple gate and EQ at the beginning of each guitar track's FX chain. And yeah, in my case, this is fairly redundant because the NTS has both the uh, Zool noise gate and the uh, gate knob but I'm adding it anyway to let you understand better what I'm doing here. So I'm using the rig gate with the stock electric guitar rhythm preset, it works great, so you only have to adjust the threshold to eliminate all the noises and humps coming from your signal chain. Afterwards, we need to add a very simple cleaning EQ, high pass at around 80Hz, low pass at around 10K, and again here you can experiment all night long trying to boost and cut sound frequencies inside this range, it all depends on your own taste, your guitar's pickup, your cables, and yeah, the important thing is to have fun, that's why I'm lighting it as it is now. One important thing now, you may need to adjust the guitar track's volume throughout the song. So what will we do to make it easier? Let's create a stereo track, rename it Rhythm Guitar Bus, color it yellow and route both the rhythm guitar tracks into it, disabling of course the master track sand. And boom! Now we control our rhythm guitars just by using a single fader. So, of course, here you can add multiple effects to this bus track. I personally like adding a multiband compressor to tame the low end and the pal mutes and make them sound tighter, so that it stays flat all the time, except when a heavy boomy frequency comes, it immediately tames it.
Alright, so now it's time to get the lead guitars. So hit Ctrl T twice, rename them lead guitar left and lead guitar right, color them like blue and pen each one 40% left and 40% right. This time I'm loading the Archetype Pliny MSIM and I'm using the built-in IR files, but again, you can really use whatever plugin you want. Like we said for the rhythm guitars, it's great to add the gate and EQ before every other plugin. Just remember that maybe this time you can set the EQ's high pass filter at around 400 Hz. You don't really need all those low frequencies for high pitched lead guitars, especially for harmonies. Also, I'm creating a stereo lead guitar bass track to control the lead guitar's track volumes more efficiently and I'm adding a little bit of reverb and delay. Alright, now Pay attention because this part is very important. Any wrong setting here will affect all your mix. There are a lot of effects you can add to your master bus track, compressors, limiters, enhancers, stereo wideners, and so on. My advice here is to experiment a bit, but always remember to make small and soft changes only. I personally like adding a limiter, Reaper's built-in Event Horizon does the trick for me, and this setting seems to be the best to get that important mix glue between all the instruments, without making the overall volume clip. However, you can really spend all nights you want trying to tweak these settings. Alright, so I guess I'm pretty happy with the result of this tutorial. Of course, every setting can be adjusted to your own taste. There are no strict rules, the only law to respect is to make it sound good. So numbers can be very different from one project to another. I personally have found my way with double tracking only, especially having a nice grindy bass that fills the mix in the center position. But of course, again, my biggest advice is to experiment and to find your own way of mixing and creating sound templates. And most importantly, to have fun. Feel free to download and use my template for whatever production you would like. Just credit me my name and link my channel, please. I've done this specifically to entertain and educate people by sharing as much information as I could. You can find the link in the description below. Alright folks, this is all for today. If you like this video and this type of content, please feel free to leave a like and comment on anything you saw or heard. And if you also want to see more of this stuff like plugin reviews, gear demos and other heavy metal related videos, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. If you want to directly support me, don't forget to listen to my instrumental solo album Musa and my hybrid practice band project Awareness EP, they are out now and they are available on all digital platforms. Amazon Music, Spotify, Deezer, Tidal, iTunes, whatever. 
And of course, you can guess all my quick intro songs I made for my YouTube videos directly from my personal Bandcamp page. Also, if you're a bedroom producer like me, you may want to take a look at my Facebook group MCMs and VST Plugins for Metalheads. It's a great community, it's growing more and more every day, more than 1500 members now, and you'll always get updates for new VST Plugin releases. So once again, folks, thanks for watching this very long video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you the next time.